Sustainability and AI are poised to drive significant changes in the telecom industry, reshaping how networks operate and evolve. To address these pivotal topics, we are joined by Christina Rodriguez, Vice President of the Network and Edge Group and General Manager of the Wireless Access Network Division at Intel Corporation. Christina, welcome. Before we dive into what to expect at this year's World Forum, I want to circle back to February, where both at MWC and in our DSP Leaders Council Vision Report, we saw a key focus on sustainability. Specifically in the report, sustainability was key to respondents with 98% ranking it as either quite or of the utmost importance. Can you tell us about what you're hearing in regard to sustainability and the work that Intel is doing to make networks more sustainable? Clarence, definitely. Sustainability is top mind for all operators and really for the entire telco industry. We know that today, telecom is one of the most powering things industries on the planet. Operators are eager for solutions that will help them and help our industry reduce energy consumption. And this is essential both uh, for both reducing environmental impact, but also reducing total cost of ownership. We have to deliver high performance, highly efficient networks. And uh, one of the ways to do that is by having an end-to-end -end virtualized network all the way to layer one. Operators need both the right architecture and the right silicon underpinning that architecture. And focusing on solving, solving this paradigm for our customers has guided Intel's VRAN roadmap investments and focus our collaboration with our partners. If, if you remember at MWC 2023, we introduced our fourth generation of Intel Xeon SP, code, uh, code, code name Sapphire Rapid EE, with Intel VRAM Boost. We call it Intel VRAM Boost. Fully integrated acceleration, a first to market innovation. Uh, this processor delivers twice the capacity with an additionally 20% power saving. And now this, uh, this uh, CPU is available and is being deployed this year. And of course, we didn't stop there. We're committed to continue driving down VRAM cost and power. And that uh, this year, if you remember NWC 2024, we introduced the future gen Intel Xeon platform codenamed Granite Rapid D. And now this platform will deliver significant gains in performance and power efficiency, again, utilizing VRAM boost acceleration and other architectural and feature enhancement, including built in AI acceleration. Uh, this, these platforms are built to deliver the right combination of performance, sustainability, TCO, reliability. They're built basically for high performance, highly efficient, AI optimized network. And uh, just to give you an example, recently Verizon completed their first data call on our fourth generation uh, Xeon SP with Intel VRAM Boost Safari Rapid E. And they highlighted, they say the following, they said, uh, they talk about the meaningful power efficiency gains, the ability to manage <clears throat> the higher workloads, and ability to manage higher throughput performance. And you mentioned artificial intelligence, and another key focus in that report was AI, where about 80% of respondents believe that AI will drive a seismic shift in how telcos operate in the next five years. What do you think are the biggest opportunities with AI and RAN? Yeah, we know AI will be everywhere from client to edge to our network and cloud, and it will be accessible across all workloads, including core and RAN. The potential uses for RAN AI are virtually unlimited. Luckily, we have the network capabilities today to support AI in the RAN through software-defined networks end-to-end. -end. And we have CPUs that can run AI workload without requiring any external component, any additional power requirements, like, for example, uh, the fourth uh, generation, Intel fourth generation of uh, Xeon uh, scalable processor with Intel VRAM Boost. With that, you don't need anything else. There, are, As far as opportunities, uh, you were asking, uh, Clarence, there are two major opportunities in RAM. 
One is about optimizing the RAN, meaning optimizing performance and cost savings through AI enhanced automation, energy efficiency, dynamic orchestration. And the second major opportunity I'm going to say is creating new value added services that generate incremental revenue for operators. For example, use cases that, that operators are more interested in today uh, with immediate uh, uh, significant TCO benefits through performance and power improvements could be dynamic network configuration, traffic steering, optimized spectrum allocation, obviously energy efficiency in the infrastructure, predictive analy analytics and control, automation in, in general. And then I believe that for revenue generation, network slicing will play a key role and will be a major opportunities. So far, again, I'll give you some examples. We have multiple run AI demos with leading operators. We have a demo with uh, SK Telecom uh, that demonstrated AI assistant power savings. We have collaborated with Vodafone to demonstrate, again, AI assisting network slicing. We have Deutsche Tele Telekom, again, AI assisting beam management. And we have worked with AT&T, again, to demonstrate energy savings. So quite a bit happening already. We're just starting on this, but it has an enormous potential for both network efficiency and to enable new service models. And, uh, and, 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 and we have, again, we have the, the, the network capabilities and the CPU to start making happen that today. So Christina, as an emerging innovation, what is your advice to operators who want to streamline AI development and integration into their current network operations? Yeah, as I said, we're just starting this journey. So it's not going to happen overnight. Operators will want to make sure the algorithm works, they can deploy uh, safely, that they're not gonna have uh, they're not gonna they're gonna not gonna have any compromises, just gonna get better and better. And uh, and that's what they're doing. There is already elements of AI being incorporated in today's network. I think uh, I think again we start by having a software defined network. We embrace uh, the new architecture, software-defined network, end-to-end -end virtualized, where innovation can happen at the pace of software. And uh, you choose an architecture with capabilities that can make it easy and practical to deploy. Having that architecture, uh, silicon underpinning that architecture that allows you to deploy AI without adding additional components and without adding power consumption, uh, in, uh, reducing the complexity and uh, reducing the cost that is uh, that is key. Every single AI use case, inference use case that can be applied to the virtual DU can be run on Intel Xeon processors, and that is huge. We're not in the data center, we're at the bottom of the tower or a building. TCO is essential. Performance per watt still drives architecture and business decisions, and we have to to take that to keep that in mind when we should choose the, the solutions. Also, another thing to keep in mind is software migration, right? That we get when your architecture is running on a Intel uh, Xeon server architecture, uh, you get software migration. You get full, uh, full compatibility generation over generation, and that protects the, the investment, the software investment that you will be doing today. Another I want to mention this, another Intel contribution to help operators early in their AI journey uh, is the what we just announced again at the NWC 2024, the early availability of the Intel VRAN AI development kit. Uh, it enables operators and developers to build uh, to build models, to build, to train, to optimize and deploy. AI models for VRAN use cases built on top of uh, Intel AI optimized libraries, frameworks, and, and tools. So really uh, a very, um, very, very useful tool. Excellent. And I'd like to transition now to the World Forum, where our theme this year represents what's at the top of people's mind here in this uh, telecom industry. How can we unleash the digital services opportunity? That's the question that we asked. And from your point of view, Christina, how can we accelerate network evolution? 
We're seeing what is happening in the telco world. We're seeing a massive industry transformation toward a software-defined, end-to-end, virtualized network all the way to layer one in the entire stack. We're seeing major operators across the entire world either already deploying at a scale, starting to deploy, or definitely announcing their intention to deploy in both Greenfield and Brownfield. We're seeing Vodafone, we're seeing Verizon, we're seeing the recent announcements uh, from AT&T, we're seeing Telus, Telefonica, Dish, Rakuten in Japan, so many others. We have reached the point of no return. That's, uh, that's just a fact. And uh, we can do this. We know now that we can do this transformation without compromising the KPIs. We have seen the reports from Verizon, from Vodafone, from Rakuten on their KPIs, on their success with uh, the, their, their deployment, the deployment of the network. The, the industry has embraced an open virtualized network that can bring scalability, flexibility, innovation in multiple areas, including AI enhanced tasks without again compromising KPIs. I'm very, I'm very proud that today nearly every virtual open RAN deployment in the world runs on Intel, Sion. Uh, we led virtualization at the core, if you remember that, and now we're leading virtualization at, uh, at the RAN. From our viewpoint, we're continuing to focus on advancing the technology investing in our silicon platform and software roadmaps to simplify and accelerate operator deployment. Yet unleashing the full opportunity of a virtual open network will require collective innovation and collaboration across the industry, which is why efforts like the DSP Council are so critical to transforming our network. And earlier you mentioned the critical role of ecosystem collaboration in the success of 5G and beyond. At MWC, we saw the wide breadth of Intel's partnerships in the industry. Can you tell us how these collaborations contribute to advancing network innovation and scalability in the years to come? Um, absolutely. This is a task for the whole industry. No one can do this alone. As an ecosystem, we need to work together to simplify and accelerate virtual open run deployments and bring innovation at the pace of software. We'll continue to work with our partners to optimize the hardware and the software together. And we're lucky and thankful for the amazing and rich ecosystem around us. We'll continue to provide the ecosystem with solutions that give the operators the best results, scalability, flexibility, innovation, including AI workloads, power reduction, automation, workload consolidation. It's unlimited. The more we can collaborate upfront all together, um, uh, for example, aligning our roadmaps, optimizing and validating our, solu our solutions upfront, the more we can simplify operators' virtual open RAN deployments and the faster we can scale and give operators the best results. Well, Christina, thank you so much for your insights today. Thank you, Clarence. Always great talking to you.